how's your spiritual life going? How would you answer that question? That's a difficult question to answer. We're uh, dropping another episode here in this series where we're looking at The Life You've Always Wanted by this book by John Ortberg. And he shares a story in here and he asks five different questions which will help us think about our how do we answer that question. And uh, he tells a story about a guy named Hank. Hank was a guy who was in his church and he seemed like a cranky guy. Uh, nothing ever seemed to please Hank. There was always uh, something to kind of complain about or argue about. Um, Hank didn't seem like a very happy person. Uh, and worse yet, he, he served in the church. And so one time a deacon came to him and said, Hank, are you happy? And uh, Hank replied, and sort of in a gruff voice, yeah. And he said, well, the deacon said, then you need to tell your face. In other words, his, his facial expressions, his tone of voice did not really communicate that he was happy. And that's part of the challenge of the spiritual life is that uh, for many times as we think about our spiritual life, uh, it's, uh, it should be evidenced in the life that we actually live. And uh, if we don't exhibit more joy or more patience, um, it's something we should ask ourselves. And so we're looking at this book by John Ortberg. And in this book, he asked um, five different questions. And uh, in, he presented a concept here, which is called boundary marker spirituality. And for many times, people think of their spiritual life as like, how am I doing in terms of certain practices? But instead, the goal is transformation. And although it seems very slow, uh, the, the question that we need to ask ourselves is, am I changing? Or do I settle for things that maybe are simply a boundary marker? But at the end of the day, uh, what we most need to become like according to scripture, is to, to love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so we asked five different questions, and I want to pose those to you as you think about your, your life with God, and how are you changing? How are you growing? The first question he asks is, am I spiritually inauthentic? Am I spiritually inauthentic? Uh, from the scriptures, uh, Jesus said to the the Pharisees, woe to you, for you clean the outside of the cup of the plate, cup end of the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. In other words, the, the problem with the Pharisees is they were more concerned about that they look spiritual than they are really being spiritual. There's more about being recognized that way as opposed to actually becoming that kind of person. And so I think that's always a question we need to ask ourselves are is uh, the, is the way that I talk, um, am I actually being my real self, or am I trying to make myself sound more spiritual than I really am? So am I spiritually inauthentic? The second question he asks is this, am I becoming judgmental, exclusive, or proud? Am I becoming judgmental, exclusive, or proud? And he refers to this verse, they love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues. And essentially it was about pride. Am I becoming a more proud person? Do I think I'm better than other people? Or do I recognize the sin within myself? And when you think about yourself, if you go into a large group of people, uh, maybe at a party, do you think of like, who do I connect with? Or who in a sense could, could, uh, add value to my conversation or uh, rather than who can I minister to today or how can I be a blessing to other people? By the way, when you set up a camera in the sun in the afternoon, it is hot. <laughs> and so I'm feeling that right this minute. So just the idea, am I becoming uh, a more proud or judgmental person? Do I think that I'm better than other people? Or do I see myself as simply a sinner who's in need of God's grace? The third question he asks, am I becoming more approachable or less? In other words, they ask this question, uh, or Jesus said about the, the Pharisees, they love to have people call them rabbi. In other words, they, they want people to think of themselves, uh, the rabbis wanted them to think of themselves as uh, these are people who have an expert in religion. But he writes, uh, Ortberg writes, Jesus was the most approachable person they had ever seen. 
the religious leaders had a kind of differentness that pushed people away. Jesus had a kind of differentness that drew people to him. True spirituality is that way. So are people more willing to come talk to you and have a conversation with you? Or do people um, feel like that you're not approachable to talk about? And that's important if you're supposed to love God and love your neighbor or love other people. How can I love other people? The fourth one is, am I growing weary of pursuing spiritual growth? Am I growing weary of becoming spiritual growth? He refers to Jesus saying, they tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and they lay, the on, lay them on the shoulder of others. In other words, do some of the spiritual practices that you have, is that something that just is weary to you? Instead, the question to ask yourself is, what will lead to the fruit that I, uh, to help me to become the person that God wants me to become? Overflowing with the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace patience, you know, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, right? Am I becoming more of a person of joy or am I becoming more irritable and a person who um, uh, is not as approachable or really uh, not being able to measure your spiritual growth that way? And the last one is simply this. Am I measuring my spiritual life in superficial ways? Am I measuring my spiritual life in superficial ways. Jesus said, you blind guides, you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. I remember when I was in college, um, I was um, with a, another guy and we would start to memorize scripture together. We went through the scripture memory plan. And I remember going through this and uh, feeling some success because memorizing things isn't usually a strength. Uh, of mine. And so I was memorizing it and we were making progress. We were trying to do two verses every week and we kept this up for a semester and we felt like we're building some spiritual momentum. And then, um, and then, I, you know, I talk to other people, I, I kind of wanted to share that, like, look at me, I, I'm memorizing scripture. And, and sort of the illusion was, uh, why aren't you doing that? And instead of, um, just taking people where they are, I was, in a sense, trying to put myself up higher than other people. But that's not the right way to think. My spiritual life should not be measured just in how much did I memorize or how many times did I go to church or how much did I give or how much did I serve or am I better than others? But instead, am I growing in my love for God and others? That is the measure and mark of spiritual transformation. So the word to you today is just a, a, this simple thought. Um, am I overflowing and becoming more and more the person that God wants me to be? Or am I measuring my spirituality in things that really aren't